Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today we continue the FL Studio series right here at BusyWorksBeats.com slash FL Studio. Today I'm going to guide you through your first lo-fi beat. Now lo-fi is all about low fidelity. It's about making sounds feel as if you've sampled them from a record and feel flawed on purpose, intentional flaw. So today I'm going to guide you step by step through this process. Now, I'm not going to use samples here as far as song samples because you may not have the sample. So I don't want to have you follow step by step on something you can't follow. So we're going to use stock sounds for now. I'll show you how to make the sounds feel dated and sampled. And I'll show you a really cool trick for those who are more advanced that you probably didn't even know FL Studio could do. So hang in there with me if you're loving these videos. Please like this series so we can keep pushing it out for you and keep bringing new fresh stuff to you and please leave a comment on what you want to see next so I can cater this towards you. So let's open up our channel rack here and we're left with a blank sampler. We're going to open up the browser to start picking from our instrumentation. Long story short, we're going to go for real sounds or sampled instruments that are from the real world. So let's grab the browser. Let's go to packs and FL doesn't come with every sound in the world. Okay, so we, we're limited, but if you go to instruments, Let's go to keyboard and let's start with a grand piano. We can always swap it out for a Rhodes piano, which is like the R&B neo soul piano later. Let's right, let's right click, open in new channel. Once you have the grand piano loaded up in your channel rack, you can go ahead with the sampler and just right click and delete it because we don't need it. Hit OK. Now on the grand piano, you want to hit Alt plus M, Alt plus M to hide or reveal this target mixer track assignment section which is this little thing here just change this number to one this will allow us to add effects to the piano on mixer channel one and then we could sort our sounds as we go so the grand piano again go to options here and go to typing keyboard to piano so that you can play with your qwerty keyboard because i don't have my midi key, uh, controller with me and it's messed up anyway so i have to rely on the qwerty keyboard for now so let's X out of the piano. So we have the grand piano and here's where we're going to start building chords. Now, lo-fi is a series of a lot of different things, but I'm going to go for the more jazzy sound. So let's right click. Let's go to piano roll. Now, before we start this, let's change our BPM here. Let's close out the browser too. And let's change our BPM to about 84 because that's like the boom bap uh, BPM. And let's turn the metronome on so we can keep count, measure our timing and use space bar to stop and, and go. Let's hit control, use our mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, that way if it, the notes are too small, you can make them bigger. So let's start off on a jazzier feel. Now again, th this video would be five hours if I explained every little detail about everything that I'm doing. So I understand at certain points, you're just gonna have to follow along. I can't explain everything from the ground up all the time. But we're going to use a chord code here for the D minor nine chord code, which is 037014. Now, when it comes to the chord codes, you can learn more at busyworksbeats.com slash chord codes. It's how to use number to make any chord you want. So I'm going to start here at D, for example, and we are going to use the chord code for the minor nine chord so that no matter where you start, you're going to make the minor nine chord, and that's a jazzy chord. So first, before I begin, I'm going to hit Alt, left click to reset the velocity for this note, and I'm going to drag this out for about half a bar. Now, to count the bars, you look at the numbers in the top here. Every number is a bar, so I'm about halfway to two. Okay, so we have D, and now just follow along. The chord code is 0, 3, 7, 10, 14. So wherever you start, that's the zero point, the point of rest, and you simply count up your keyboard. So it's zero, one, two, three. Now, again, most people don't have this view, so go down to your piano roll options here, go to view. And go to key labels and then activate all notes so that you can follow along with the notes I'm typing out. All right, so you have D, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This makes the D minor 9 chord. Now, this is a really low octave, so I'm going to hit control up so that it's in a better octave. Okay, we get that jazzy sound. Now, the piano details a different question, but we're getting a jazzier start to the track. Now I'm going to take this up a notch and add the 11th, but then what I'm going to do with G is highlight it, hitting control left click, and then hit control down to transpose it down an octave. 
It's a little cluttered for me, so I don't like that tone. Let's delete the note. So I want a more of a jazzy timing, so I'm gonna grab the chord here by hitting control, left click, and drag. So I'm gonna go one, two, stop. Okay, so we're gonna grab the whole chord, hit control, left click, and highlight. Hit shift, and then left click to duplicate this chord over. Okay, and we're gonna drag it so that it fits within the two bar sequence. Now again, I can't teach you everything about everything, but we're going to grab the second note here and the fourth note and hit shift up. So we're trans we're morphing this into the major. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. Hit control, highlight your first chord, hit shift, left click and drag so that the top note for the next chord is D. Now, if it doesn't sound right, we're gonna switch it between the major and the minor. Again, we teach this stuff in our music theory courses. We break it all down for you at busyworksbeats.com slash music theory essentials. We teach this stuff. But long story short, I'm gonna convert this up to a major chord by pulling the, uh, what was it? The E flat or the D sharp up to an E and turning the A sharp to a B. And we're gonna copy the same exact chord and pull it over. And just make sure it fits within that two bar area. So very simple. We're gonna hit shift, left click, and we're just gonna lower the velocity a little bit, which is how hard they play the notes. So it's a little bit more soft. And we're gonna try grabbing the top note here, hit control, shift, and left click, and highlight, then hit control down. Sometimes it sounds cluttered, sometimes it doesn't. Let's grab the second to top note and hit control down. Still sounds cluttered. It sounds cluttered because we're in the lower frequencies. Let's swap out the sound. Let's try for a softer Rhodes piano. Let's go to our browser. Let's grab the Rhodes. And this is a case where I would left click and drag and really make sure that you're over top the grand piano only so that it replaces it. If you make a mistake, you can't undo it. Now here in the direct wave window, we're gonna turn off the effects reverb. Now we're gonna make this piano sound a little more dreamy. So let's go to the mixer insert one by pulling up the mixer, mixer channel one. And we're gonna load up some plugins you may not be used to, but let's load up Fruity Delay three. Turn down your dry level, keep your wet level all the way up, Turn your feedback down, your feedback level down, and under your modulation area, turn, turn your time up. Now here I think it adds a delay, which let's pull the delay time down to nothing, down to all the way at the bottom so that you don't hear the delay. And now you can hear it go, it kind of goes up and down in pitch. I'm going to exaggerate it by pulling the time all the way up so I can hear how fast it's going and then pull your rate down. Then pull your time back to about 50%. If you want it more audible, pull your rate up. One Hertz, if you're reading the top left value, it tells you the value. Around one Hertz is probably the best speed. We're gonna close out the browser for now. Let's load up some plugins you probably didn't know you had in FL Studio. Let's load up your patcher and turn off, click the green button to turn it off so that you can hear your sound again because patcher by default mutes the sound. Go to your presets and load up the, where are we at here? Load up the 1K doubler. This is gonna make the sound more creamy, so to speak. Now you can turn the patcher back on and just turn your knob on. Let's go back to Fruity Delay 3 and just turn down the time just a little bit. I was 
was trying to see what it would sound like. I feel like it needs more like ongoing sound. So let's add under slot three, Fruity Reverb 2. So that it has a tail to it. Then you can add another Fruity Delay 3 and turn it on stereo or ping pong mode, doesn't matter. Turn your wet level to about 25%. feedback area we're going to pull the cutoff down a little bit let's also hit control up let's go to our piano roll here and hit control up just to see what it would sound like in a higher octave a little distracting in the higher octave so let's keep it in the lower octave Here's another trick, hit Alt plus, oh, I think it's Alt S, there we go, Alt S in your notes, and then mess with these strum, uh, uh, what are the parameters, okay, so turn your strength up a little bit, so it kind of slurs the notes, like Glissando style. Every chord is not going to sound good that way, but that's just an option for you. Okay, so I'm going to leave my normal. Let's go back to the playlist now and grab pattern one and drag it inside the playlist. Let's go to song mode and hit space bar. I think we also need a little bit of movement for this sound, so I'm going to go back to the channel rack. Open up your mixer here. Go to mixer channel one. Under slot five, we're going to load up the fruity. Where are we at? Fruity. I always forget the name of it. Fruity pen omatic. And let's just turn the amount up and turn it on pan mode and turn it on the middle shape here, which is a triangle. Turn your speed up a little bit. I'm going to turn my amount down a little bit so it's not too over the top. And then let's pull the fader down so it's not super loud. One thing you can do is go back into pattern one in your channel rack, click inside here, the piano roll, and hit shift up to transpose it up or down in key. I'm gonna have the same five, but a different tone. I like this tone a little bit more. And now that gives us that kind of 80s R&B vibe, like we sampled it. So now the one thing, which I'll give you these project files for free so you don't have to memorize this stuff, but we need a vinyl crackle sound. So let's go to our browser and I'm gonna pull one from busyworksbeats.com. Let's go to the samples folder that I have. Let's go all the way down here. And here's a vinyl uh, sample. So we're just gonna left click and drag it inside the playlist. Go to song mode. Now what I'm gonna do is just chop the ending because you can see the ending goes over a little bit. Close out the browser, hit shift, right click, to get rid of the excess. And all I'm gonna do is grab the vinyl and hit Control B, and it will latch paste. Now go to your channel rack and turn down the vinyl by using the channel volume here, because it's loud by default. Just gonna turn it down. Now let's click up here, go to all, and then let's send this to mixer channel two so that it's sorted for us. So now we're getting the textures that we need. Now we need the drums, so let's go to our browser. Let's pull up some drums. And again, I don't want to assume that you have samples, so I'm going to just assume you're using stock sounds. Let's go to packs and let's go to loops and find some drums that kind of match. Let's just use the, the uh, DL breaker. Let's, before, there's so much to explain. <laughs> before we get into it, let's go to our channel rack, hit the plus icon, and let's go to slice X. The reason I use this is because it auto slices the drums for you. Just go to your browser, go to DL Breaker, and just left click and drag it into Slice X. It will auto chop and name all the drums for you, so it saves a lot of time. So now what you can do is use your MIDI, your piano roll, to trigger the drums. 
Now, one thing about the drums, actually, no, I'm thinking about something else in my head, but we're going to go back to the channel rack, send the drums to mixer channel three. So they're separate. Now you see how it auto mapped the MIDI. You want to go to your drums here and hit control X to get rid of that. Let's go to a new pattern, pattern two, and let's start mapping out our drums. Now, what I like to do is hear my drums as I play stuff. So grab pattern, close out your browser, grab pattern two from the left side here, drag it inside the playlist, and then go inside your channel rack, right click, go to piano roll. And now we can map out our drums. Now, when you map out your drums in piano roll, they're very quantized and very locked to the grid. And I'll show you a way to make them sound more human and real. For one, let's put, let's get our snare placement down. So let's use a metronome just to help you. Also hit Alt, left click to restore the volume here. Velocity. Now I'm gonna just drag it out for two bars, but usually I don't go two bars on drums. Okay, now we're on the kick. So I start with the snare to get the right snare timing. Then I go to the kick. So I wanna go boom. Or whatever. Let me boom box. Let me beat box first. Okay, so boom. Boom. So let's add one kick. And then we're going to add another kick, kick two, and then the first kick. So don't worry about it sounding robotic right now. I'll show you how to make it sound more human in a little bit. Also, make sure the notes are dragged out so that you can hear the whole portion of the sample, or else it will cut itself off. that secondary kick so one kicks like the main kick the other one's a secondary kick now we're gonna hit control shift highlight those secondary kicks hit shift left click and then drag it so it copies the same value across each note Okay, so this these are little tiny things we're gonna do. Now we're going to offset the kick a little bit as a whole. So we're gonna hit control, left click and highlight kick one and two, and then hit alt right. This is gonna micro nudge it off the grid. It's gonna give it more human timing. I'm gonna pull it back one. Now see where the kick overlaps a little bit? You either wanna hit alt, left click the edge and just drag it so it's not overlapping, or you could use your slice tool to chop out the excess. But make sure it doesn't overlap or else we'll keep playing on bar three. Now we need some hi-hats. So the hi-hats are going to be simple. Just one, two, one, two. So we're going to grab the hi-hat. And I'm going to hit control to select the hi-hat only. And then make the first hi-hat louder, second hi-hat softer. And then I'm going to grab these, hitting control. Left click. Then hit shift to highlight and copy them over. So hit shift. All right, so control, highlight, hit shift, left click to drag over. So here how the hi-hat's a little early. We're gonna hit alt right to delay the hi-hats. And here how the kick has a hi-hat on it. That's tricking our ear into thinking that a hi-hat's playing. So this is where we have to go a little more advanced. Go back into slice X here. Find your, you have to find the kick sample that's triggering. So you have to play the track and then see what's highlighted. So it's this first kick here. We're going to double click and we need to add a filter to it. So we're going to go to filter one X and then we turn the resonance down and turn your cutoff down. And this affects everything in the group. So I just, let's do that again. Let's go to your kick, double click. We're going to separate the kick and let's go to the filter row right here. Change your group to two. Now we're going to go to articulator two. turn filter on LP, which is a low pass filter, meaning we're cutting out the high frequencies. Go to one X, turn your resonance down and then change your cutoff. To keep the same kind of vibe, we're going to click on kick two and send it from the filter here to group two, and it will copy the same filter. So 
So let's say your kick isn't hitting the way you want it to hit. You can actually route each sound. So you can route, you can take out the individual hits and mix them separately. So what we're going to do is go to kick one, double click on that time marker and go to out. And this is a plus one. You can do minus one. So this is plus one, which means for those who are more advanced, you see how we're changing, routing this to mixer channel three. When I add plus one, it now the kick is separated out to uh, four in the mixer. So the kick is separate right here, whereas the snare and everything else is on three. So we're going to do that for the kicks. Double click on the marker and send it out to plus one. That way you can run your kicks separate. So on mixer channel four now, keep in mind this is occupied. So what I do is right click and rename this kick so that I know in case I accidentally route something to mixer channel four, it won't overlap into the kick sounds. And that's important for later more advanced stuff. Go to mixer channel four here in the mixer, go to slot one. Let's open up fruity soft clipper, turn up your threshold. Then you want to go to, hmm, actually this will affect everything. So, da, da, da. so we have to do this for both. Okay. So let's go to your fruity soft clipper on mixer channel four. And then on mixer channel three, I'll show you a trick here. Go to mixer channel four, go to the drop down arrow for the fruity soft clipper and go to save preset as left click and drag it over top of mixer insert three. It will copy the same preset over. And now what I'm going to do is go inside slice X, go to the cog in the top left, go to your wrench tool, and then go to your level adjustments and turn up your volume. So now everything's hitting super hard. Go back to your mixer and start turning your fader down so you don't blow your ears out. So we're cranking everything. So I think in slice X, you might be able to crank the... Oh, you can. Okay. So instead of doing this, I know I'm kind of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, but what I'm trying to do is crank the drums without cranking the, I'm trying to crank the kick without cranking the drums. So before you do the volume multiplier, just right click and reset that under your wrench tool. What I'm going to do is go back to the plugin slice X. And since I have the kick routed to a separate mixer channel, I can go now to each kick and under amp, there's, if you read the top left, this is controlling the panning. This one's controlling the volume. So I can turn up the volume and it will push the kick harder. Let's restore the volume here. Now the kick is hitting harder. Let's double click on the second kick and turn up that amp too as well. Now the filter is a little harsh, so I'm going to open it up a little bit. Also the kick, there's so much to explain, but just follow step by step. The kick's a little sharp in pitch, so we're going to double click on the kick, turn the speed down a little bit. So about negative 207 in this case. I'm reading the values in the top left. Also, for more advanced users, since the kick is now in a different group, we're actually going to double click on the first kick and send the amplitude to group two. Double click on the second kick, send the amplitude to group two. And then we're going to use the volume envelope to control the kick shape because the kick goes boom. I don't want it to ring out so long. So I'm going to use this quick curvature here to help me tighten up the kick. It gets rid of that long tail. And you can move this here to make it longer if you want. Now, if you want your other drums to be loud, just go to your wrench tool and turn up your volume multiplier under the wrench tool. Actually, that affects the kick as well, so be careful there. So that's why I said you got to be careful with all this stuff because everything affects everything. But let's... Trying to think of a different way we could do it because the kick hmm. so i want to boost let me hear what it sounds like boosted without the amplitude of the kick being boosted and then we'll see what it sounds like so what i'm doing is going back to each kick turning down the amp and i'm doing this so that i'm turning everything up and then i'm going to turn the kick down if it's too loud that's what i'll do so turn this bit stuff down
okay let's go back to our playlist now i know that took a while but that's what you have to do when you're producing very logical sequence anyway hit control b to latch paste pattern two across so that the drums repeat hit space bar to play it going to do something even more advanced here which is to group these sounds in the mixer so go to your mixer grab uh, insert three and four hit control left click and highlight and once they're highlighted go to a blank mixer insert which is insert five in this case right click the arrow down here and route to this track only that's going to route all the drums to one track let's rename it drums i'm doing this so that we have a group that can trigger a side chain so go back to insert one which is your piano Actually, let's let's create another group under mixer insert six and let's call this instruments because if you have more instruments You want the kick and snare to duck both things or side chain both things What we're gonna do now is go to drums the drum group find your instrument group and right click and side chain to this track It won't do anything just yet Now we're going to group our instruments, which are just tracks two and one. Hit control, left click and highlight. Go to your instruments group, right click and route to this track only. So now we can control the drums and instruments on two mixer channels. Let's open up the instruments group. Let's open up slot one and let's find the fruity limiter. Okay, we're gonna go to compressor mode. We're going to right click where it says side chain and then select the drums group. So your drums group becomes your trigger. Now let's copy these settings. Copy these settings here. We're gonna go to threshold, negative 30 dB, ratio all the way up, and then you can mess with your attack and release times here. back and mess with the filter a little bit for the kicks. You can mess with the swing knob a little bit. I wouldn't overdo it. You can add more instruments like the jazz guitar under your browser if you go to packs instruments and go to guitar you can add some jazz guitar i wouldn't overdo it with this but most lo-fi that i've heard has like a guitar element in it so right click open that up now remember that something is on track four five and six so we want to go to mixer channel seven now which is completely blank go to your mixer go to your instruments tab and right click route to this track only so it only goes to that group and now you can kind of improv or play jazz guitar. I'm just going to see what it sounds like. If it's whack, then we're not going to put it in. So, I mean, here's what I'm going to do. I think what I'm going to do is pull the, you don't have to do this. This is only because I'm playing on my QWERTY keyboard. It's harder to play the black notes on your QWERTY keyboard. So what I'm gonna do is hit shift down for my piano. Just pull it down one so that I can play on my QWERTY keyboard. Then I'm gonna transpose everything up. So you don't have to do that, do it that way, but that's what I'm doing. Go to pattern three, find your jazz guitar, right click, go to piano roll. You don't even need to be in piano roll actually. Just go to song mode, record, notes and automation. And I'm just gonna play up and down my QWERTY keyboard until something sounds right.
Now I'm going to add effects so it sounds cooler, but let's just get it started here. I'm going to mute my mic for a little bit. I hit one sour note, so I'm going to go in there and fix it. That was the sour note. I meant to hit E instead of F. So let's give this more of a guitar feel. Let's go to slot one here and let's pull up the fruity stereo enhancer. Where are we at here? Stereo enhancer. Pull your phase offset to the right a little bit. Let's add slot two, fruity delay three. Turn your wet level down and turn your time to about two. So the time says two in the top left. Go to ping pong mode and turn your pan width up. Turn your cutoff down for your low pass filter. You don't have to do this, this is just what I like. And then let's go to slot three and add fruity reverb two. Turn the reverb up, turn your decay up. I send the snare to the amp group two so it has that cutoff sound. It sounds a lot tighter. So what I did, click, double clicked on the snare here and slice X and went to amp row and then articulator two, which is group two, which has this volume thing here, which cuts it off short. Also, I think I need to tune the snare a little bit. pitch down all we need now is this bass so let's go to our channel rack and then go to pattern 4 add a plus icon 3x osc Turn oscillators two and three down. Go to your cog icon, go to your wrench icon, and go to mono. And let's send this to mixer channel eight, which is blank. And I'm just gonna freestyle the bass with the QWERTY keyboard. So it's gonna be in a higher octave now, but we're gonna change it later. Play that with the QWERTY keyboard. We're gonna double click to go inside. Hit control down twice. You're gonna get the project file, so don't worry about this. Memorize it. and just turn down your bass a little bit. Now, if you don't want the high pitch stuff to pop out every now and again, go to Mixer Channel 8, open up Slot 1, go to Parametric EQ 2. Go to your blue icon, left click and drag that down until it's this shape, which is a high cut or a low pass filter. We're just gonna pull the frequency down. I told you we're going to transpose the song back up one. So let's, there's a way to do it here. Let me see if I could figure out how they do it. Actually. 
forgot how to do it off the top of my head because I'm used to doing it a different way. Let me see if I can figure it out in two seconds. If not, then it should be, oh, it's over here. So what we're gonna do is hit Control and grab pattern one, which is our chord, pattern three, which is our, uh, where are we at? Where I'm hitting Control to highlight each one and then pattern four. So pattern one, three, and four, we're gonna right click and then we're gonna transpose this up one. So just in, enter one and hit enter. So it's gonna drag these notes up one so that we were in the key that I had before. Another cool trick is go to your master pitch here and just pull it down just as an experimental sound. That sounds fire to me. I kind of want to see what it sounds like if the all the drums went through the filter. So I'm going to go to each drum and I'm going to send it to filter two. And for the hi-hat filter two. So here how I just like reset the whole thing. Go to your channel rack, hit control X to get rid of that. But then it kind of takes away the, the hardness of the drums. Pull up the drums, go to your wrench tool, turn up volume multiplier. See how the kicks are super loud? We're gonna go back and pull the amp down a little bit so it doesn't overpower the. So now I can mess with the filter here. can't hear the hi-hat so kind of so I'm gonna take the hi-hats out the group filter group I must have done something here it looks like I must have moved the time marker over by accident why the hi-hats sound different now so I'm gonna pull them back to the left also we're gonna drag the hi-hats out so they don't sound like tss, tss, tss. And then we're gonna hit alt L so they don't overlap and when you hit alt L make sure you select only with selection so it doesn't worry about the other notes now it sounds more natural gonna pull the velocities down you don't have to do all this I'm just editing what I've made so you don't have to do this step this is more for the, the project file download Third snare feels a little early. I'm gonna hit Alt Right a little bit. So I mean, we can sit here all day and like do the nuances. I'm not gonna waste your time doing that. things we could do from here what I'm going to do though is go back to insert one I think delay one was our time wobble thing I'm going to turn that off grab the drop down arrow go to save preset as and drag it over top the instruments here 
so that it affects every instrument. So they have that pitch wobble effect. Okay, you can spend more time getting it and finessing it the right way. I'll leave you with the file downloads with the link below. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment for what you want to see next. Please share so your friends can get help with this too. And like the video so that we can get this ball rolling if you like this series. Thanks for watching today. It's BusyWorksBeats.com.